Let's have an overview of the Ascent Enterprise plan and discuss some of the features it contains. As a reminder, Ascent is available as a free plan as well as Starter, Advanced Enterprise and Enterprise Plus. Those are known as the new Ascent plans compared to the legacy plans which were premium business and enterprise. Those new plans have been introduced a couple of months ago. Today is actually August 2024. So what I'm going to be discussing is actually accurate for uh, August 2024. 24. And as you might already know, there are lots of new features being released, especially for the enterprise plan, which is one of the big Asana focus at the moment. Those features are grouped into different buckets. We have the user, what I call the user features, which will impact the final users of the app. We have things around uh, control and security and compliance, which is more for admins and project managers. We have features around integrations. I want to discuss limits as well as uh, API and tech. Let's dive right in. We are making specific videos about user features as well as security features. Today, I'm just going to be listing uh, those features and give you some tips and tricks and what I think about them. Let's start with the what I call the user features. Those are the ones that most users will see when they use Asana. So the enterprise plan allows you to have a lot of things you can customize. For example, uh, forms can have a customized banner. You can have a customized logo in the top right corner and you can have what's called custom onboarding, which is the ability to have a new user go through specific screens and be added to specific teams and be assigned on specific projects as part of their onboarding, which is really great when you have someone joining in a very large organization. Around goals with the enterprise plan, you also have the ability to define templates for goals and also define a type. That type would be related to the OKR framework. So type would be O for objective, KR for key results results as well as I think personal goals. Those are the types you can have and you can't customize them yet, but maybe you'll be able to do that later. You also have the ability to make a company announcements. That's the ability for an admin to write a banner at the top of everybody's screen to uh, showcase something, to congratulate someone or share like a piece of important news with everybody. Even guests, everybody will see that banner and the ability to have a small button uh, that would link to a specific page on the web. The enterprise plan also has what's called universal workload. So you might already know the workload as a tab within portfolios, but the enterprise plan has universal workload. That means it goes beyond a portfolio and the lists of projects within. Uh, so it's going to really look at the entire Asana account. In addition to universal workload, you also have what's called the capacity plan. So it's the ability to anticipate projects that will come in a few months and start to allocate work and allocate resources on projects. For example, you can say that Brian's going to be working full time on one project and part time on something else without going into uh, all the details of that project in terms of tasks. So that could be very handy when used in combination with a uh, universal workload. The enterprise plan also has what's called endorsed teams. So when you have too many teams and it's a bit of a mess, you have the ability to endorse specific teams, marking them as official uh, so that you can help. That can help with the cleanup that you're going to be doing. You can also export portfolios as PDFs and you can also have the feature called bundles, giving you the ability to bundle together fields and sections and task templates and rules and apply that bundle to a project or several projects or a project template. So that's very handy, especially if you have many, many projects that are based on the same template. Those are the user facing features, the ones that everybody will really be impacted by. They are also a lot of feature around security and compliance and control. Usually those are appear in the admin console that admins and super admins have access to. For example, you could be able to decide the access permissions on read only links, permissions on team. So what would be the default privacy? Uh, same thing for project permissions for team, team membership. You could also decide who can invite guests. You can make two-factor authentication uh, something compulsory or optional. Uh, you can decide on mobile data control, which means you can forbid people from taking screenshots and things like this. You can also use a skim as a way to provision and deprovision users automatically. And you could use SAML as a way to log in uh, into 
into an app. So Salmo could be Microsoft, could be Google, could be Okta as a way for people to log into Asana. So those are the control and authentication features that are available within the enterprise plan. In terms of integrations, the legacy plans uh, allowed you to use the Power BI, Tableau and Salesforce integration with the business plan. It's not the case anymore with the advanced plan. So you need to go to enterprise if you want to use one of those three integrations and there might actually be more integrations coming in joining that list. In terms of limits, the enterprise plan does not have a limit in terms of users, does not have limits in terms of actions. You can run portfolios or AI actions for that matter. Those limits exist for starter and advanced and they do not exist for enterprise. In terms of API and tech, it's pretty straightforward. The enterprise plan will give you access to something called service accounts. A service account is basically a token you can use in the API calls that you make, the scripts that you write, the automation that you write in order to have access to the entire account. Whatever privacy applies, it doesn't apply there. The service account allows you to access everything, which is pretty handy when you have to do things at scale or do things automatically within a routine, for example. Finally, the enterprise plan gives you the ability to choose the data residency, which means you can choose to have your data stored in Europe, in Australia, in Japan, whatever data center you use, part of your data will be located there. Some of the data is still located in the US. We can give you some details about exactly what it means, but your data could be located uh, closer to the way you work within uh, countries that have, especially regarding uh, GDPR. So that was a list of what the enterprise plan has as of today in August, 2024. This is not a complete list. There's a lot of very small features that have been introduced in the past couple of weeks and months and it's still coming and they have a pretty fast pace of releasing things and we know that a lot of the new features that Asana is going to releasing will go to the enterprise plan and only the new enterprise plan compared to the legacy. If you have any question, if you are considering upgrading to enterprise, let us know. As an Asana partner, we at iDo can help you decide and we can even do custom demos for you and really allow you to decide if enterprise or enterprise plus are a right choice for you.